talking about women in technology. Today's special guest is Christy Chapman, an instructor at Florida State University in the program in interdisciplinary technology. Computing. Mm -hmm. Computing, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got that a little wrong, but that's okay. That's good. So you've been in technology for how long? Well, I've been teaching mm -hmm. in higher ed um, in uh, the computer science field for approximately 17 and a half years. Okay. Yeah. So it's been it's been a, an awesome experience, you know, um, as technology evolves, uh -huh. you know, so um, has my teaching, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and so it's, it's an exciting field to be in. Yes. So tell me about some of the classes that you teach. Okay. So I currently, um, this is my third year mm -hmm. uh, at Florida State University, um, and I teach um, two courses mainly. Um, I teach uh, a object-oriented uh, language uh, programming course um, in Java, mm -hmm. and I also teach a web development course. Okay. Um, so we teach students how to design and develop uh, web applications. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, is that just for programming students, students that are involved in con computer no. information technology, or is it for? It's for the masses. Okay. So they, which is why, um, as I mentioned, the program that I'm currently teaching in is uh, an interdisciplinary program, mm -hmm. and so we teach to whoever wants to learn how to code, okay. you know, so I, um, there are no prerequisites for my course, mm -hmm. and so um, I teach them from scratch, you know, how to code, and so we build, um, we build on the concepts and, um, and you know, build their confidence, you know, and they learn, some of them, this is their first language, okay. programming language, All and right. uh, so, but most of my students tend to be information technology students mm -hmm. um, and or computer science students, but not all. Well, why is it important for non-computer technology students to learn programming? Really, everyone, <laughs> I believe, should uh, at least be exposed mm -hmm. to, um, to a language uh, and, and have a, an opportunity to, to code. Um, and here's why, because we use technology every day, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so much a part of our lives. Right. And why not, um, you know, not just be a user of technology, but also have uh, a way to impact how that software or that application uh, is designed, right? And so technology really, you know, any major mm -hmm. would benefit or any, uh, any student would benefit um, from um, from taking a, a computer course, a programming course, and that along with whatever discipline or major they, they, they um, are pursuing, it's only going to make them that much more marketable mm -hmm. because everything from agriculture to health to, uh, to you know, cosmetic, you know, to anything you can think of, right? Uh, transportation, uh, all need technology, right? All right. need some type of technology. So um, I think in order to communicate effectively in the workforce, you really should have a solid understanding of how think, how technology is used, and even the process of developing. You may not be the developer, but you may be an end user mm -hmm. that will provide feedback to those developers mm -hmm. on how that application or that software should be designed, right? So right. that, because technology is, is, is a tool. Understandable, mm -hmm. yes. Now with that said, do you see the need? What's the importance of women being involved in technology? Absolutely. I recently read uh, an article and it was talking about, and you know, we see this all the time, but the importance of diversity, right, mm -hmm. in, in the boardroom, uh, you know, or in, in management, right, in leadership. Well, there should also be diversity in, um, in the developing team, on these developing teams, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, technology, like I mentioned, it, it involves more than just coding, right? And so when we, and, and even looking at my background, my, I, when I graduated from high school from Cairo, Georgia, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, um, I left uh, and pursued a degree in, from the University of Georgia in psychology. Mm -hmm. So my ba background is human, right? Mm -hmm. Human cognitive mm -hmm. thinking and, and right. you know, how humans 
process hey. information. Mm -hmm. And so uh, never thought of pursuing a degree in technology. That okay. was not my initial thought. And um, so I finished my degree from the University of Georgia and uh, worked in industry for some time. Mm -hmm. And um, felt the need to go back to get my master's and began my master's in counseling. Okay. And uh, loved that. But then I met a bit who eventually became my mentor. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she was a professor at FAMU uh, teaching uh, in computer science program. And so I eventually took a course here or there and, and I you know, got bitten by the tech bug. And you loved it. I loved it. I did. Okay. And, and so uh, eventually uh, finished up my master's in software engineering. Uh -huh. And uh, that's when I began teaching okay. at, at Florida and m I taught Florida and m in the computer science department there okay. for uh, about 14 years. Yeah. We're going to take a break right here. Okay. And when okay. we come back, I want you to tell me more about your experience at Florida and m University. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Stay tuned for more conversations. This portion of Conversations with Nicole is sponsored by Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare. Welcome back to our conversation. If you're just joining us, our guest today is Christy Chapman, an instructor at Florida State University who is a woman in technology. Yes, yes. Before the break, you were telling us about your tenure or your when you attended Florida A&M University mm -hmm. and you then from being a student became an employee there, correct? Absolutely. Okay, and what was your position there? So I was an instructor in uh, the computer department of computer and information sciences, okay. um, and during my tenure there, gosh, I taught numerous courses. Okay. Um, I I taught discrete mathematics. What was your favorite course? My that you favorite taught? course um, that had the biggest impact uh -huh. would probably be the professional development course that okay. I taught. Um, it wasn't so much a, a technical course, mm -hmm. but it um, I had an, an opportunity to mentor students and help shape them up and polish them off and and um, get them ready for industry and the workforce whatever their their uh, career goals were one of the things that you did while at famu was mm -hmm. develop an information security program right right um, i did uh, i spearheaded that effort um, and it was that was an awesome task as well okay. um, and what we did was and this was not of course, not me by myself, mm -hmm. but a team of us. Um, we identified that you know security was definitely um, a need, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and and it was definitely something we needed to in, needed to add and enhance our curriculum, right. our courses, and to make sure that our students got that exposure because you know it, like like we talked about to be competitive. So we introduced uh, several courses in the, in the curriculum. Um, I actually created a couple of, of the courses that um, we offered. So we offered um, Introduction to Computer Security mm -hmm. and um, Applied Security and also a Network uh, Security course. Wow. And so from, you know, initially, and we partnered with Florida mm -hmm. State mm -hmm. initially to, to create that, that curriculum, okay. that information assurance curriculum. And eventually we um, pursued a, um, a designation mm -hmm. uh, through the National Security Agency okay. and uh, also through the Department of Homeland Security. Okay. And, uh, and through that designation came a certification, absolutely. correct? Absolutely. So we, and it's a, it's a designation that's not so much, uh, it's not a designation for the, the, the computer science department, mm -hmm. it is for the university. Okay. And so we had to, uh, and that was one of the, some of the, you know, some of the tasks I had to to do was identify where information security was taught uh -huh. and, and emphasized again, you know, across campus. Excellent. And so uh, Excellent. we received that designation back in 2014. In closing, if you were to give some encouragement mm -hmm. to a woman, okay, a young woman that is interested in technology, what would you tell her? I would tell them that um, to this is an awesome feel, um, and there are so many opportunities out there to be had, right? Um, and no matter what your interests are, if you pair this along with technology and the under, you know, an understanding, um, having even a, even a foundational understand, basic understanding of technology, that your, you know, the opportunities are, are just you know, limitless. 
you know, and so um, someone in, in technology needs to be a, uh, someone who's creative. And women, we tend to be very creative, right? Yeah, we are. <laughs> and, um, and it also requires you to be a, a good problem solver. Mm -hmm. And I think we are definitely good at that. We are that um, too. So I think, not think, I know that um, this field, this discipline is um, it's ripe mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's for women mm -hmm. and young girls. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, it's one of my passions is that we, we need to have a presence. Okay. Right in, on those development teams, and we need to have a presence and a voice when they create new technologies and, and you know innovate. Uh, and so I think that if you're someone who's creative and someone who thinks out of the box and someone who is uh, passionate and um, creative and good problem solver and you know thinker, uh, this is it's, it's a field to consider for sure. Okay, Christy yeah. Chapman. Thank you. Thank you. It's <laughs> so nice to have you, Thank you. with us today. Okay. All right. Stay tuned for more conversation. Today's Medical Moment features breastfeeding. Today we have with us Dr. Tanya Evers with Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare. Welcome Dr. Evers. Thank you for having me. So tell me which department specifically you work with. I'm an OBGYN, but I'm a faculty member with the Family Medicine Residency Program at Tallahassee Memorial. Great. Now tell me about breastfeeding. Why is breastfeeding so passionate for you? You know, I don't exactly know what made me so passionate about breastfeeding. Uh, I'm sure that part of it is that I had my first child at the end of medical school and she was very young mm -hmm. when I started my residency program and I really wanted to be successful and I wanted to figure out ways to be successful so I read a lot about it and I just tried to find encouragement with those around me and I, I so I think the kind of the personal side of it is probably what encouraged me and then I had a second child during residency and and I actually felt the second time around I was more successful and I, I just and I learned some new tips along the way and mm -hmm. I really want to share those with other moms. Well probably after having some practice. Because, right and it was just such an incredible experience for me and mm -hmm. I really felt that it made me close to my children. And um, that's really important when you're working 12 and 14 and 24 and 28 hour shifts, yes. that you wanna feel like that every moment counts with your child. Yeah, and, and to me, breastfeeding was just one of the ways that I could give maximize my time and, and give them a piece of myself. Tell us why it's important for mothers to breastfeed. Well, some of the benefits for, of breastfeeding for the infant include decreased ear infections, lower respiratory infections, childhood obesity, mm -hmm. childhood leukemia, asthma. There's so many great reasons that um, babies want to be breastfed. Mm -hmm. And breast milk is the best milk for babies. Absolutely. And what are some of the benefits for the mother? For the mother, there are decreases in uh, certain GYN cancers, including ovarian cancer mm -hmm. and certain types of breast cancer, as well as decreased type 2 diabetes. Wow, that's incredible. You know, to think that something as natural as breastfeeding could help a mother in that way. Absolutely, and it's, and it's wonderful for her to be able to bond with her infant as well. Right, so what tips would you give for a mother that wants to breastfeed or thinking about breastfeeding? Well, I think you need to ask a lot of questions and be prepared for the process because especially a first time mom, they haven't done this before. Right. And so I always describe that it's like a dance. And so the mom and the baby need to learn the dance mm. and then it will go so much more smoothly. Okay. And so that's really important for them to have the right perspective going into breastfeeding and going to the hospital. And then we have lots of people in the hospital that are there to help, including our nurses on the floor, our lactation consultants, okay. and then breastfeeding support groups when they go home. So there's a lot of support, community support Absolutely. for breastfeeding. Yes. Okay, that is great. Any closing words that you wanna give us on breastfeeding? I think that breastfeeding and breast milk is really the first gift that a mother can give to her infant. Mm -hmm. And it's one that they may not remember, but that they'll know that mom cared and mom wanted to give them that breast milk. It actually is the gift that keeps on giving. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Stay tuned for more conversation.
Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. We are here at Centrali Restaurant in Midtown, and my guest is the wonderful Ariana Davis. Welcome, Ariana. Hi, thank you for having me. Ariana, you are a student at Florida State University. Yes, go and, Nose. Yes, go <laughs> Nose. What's your major? My major is Information Technology with a minor in Computer Science. And you are a woman in tech? Yes, for sure. Okay, and how did you get started as a woman in technology? I started back in sophomore year in high school. My teacher, Mr. Olivo, great digital design teacher, really had me involved in the tech scene there. And over time, I just really had a passion for it, and it, it grew to where I'm now involved in design and development. So back in high school was really the foundation for me, and continuing to now, I've definitely grown as a developer and designer, so I'm really grateful about that for sure. That's great. So, so back in high school, were there a number of girls in technology back then? Not really. Um, people, and still to this day, people come up to me and it's like, hey, my, my laptop has a virus, or my computer froze, or uh, I don't understand, like my, my phone's not working, mm -hmm. and I'm, it's usually like a minor thing, but people just associate me with tech so much mm -hmm. that I feel like I'm like, you're like a geek squad in a way. Okay. So um, back in high school, there wasn't that many females in that certain classes, which really was just another motivator for me to really continue and push, push through that. Okay. And um, people seeing me doing technology and digital design even motivated them to really partake in it and get advice and, and uh, have it as like an additional asset on top of what they're already learning. So uh, that was really like a, a key, a key foundation for me to like continue to learn digital design. So, gotcha. Yeah. So how did you come to choose FSU uh, for your college career? Yes, FSU is between FSU and UF, but doing a lot of research, um, like I said, technology is very important to me and having the best resources and uh, the amount of organizations and community involvement is very important for me. And it boiled down to definitely Tallahassee, um, FSU being a welcoming college in the university, and even being involved now, I'm in uh, an organization that goes by Techno, mm -hmm. and we are just very involved in the community. We travel to different hackathons and events, and I'm really glad that I chose this school for sure. So, wow, yeah. that's exciting. Yes, yes. a lot going on. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so you have your own business, right? Yes. You do oh, some consultant God. work, mm -hmm. and sure. what type of things do you do? I mean, mainly do web development, so it goes from uh, small businesses to even sometimes large corporations, which is awesome. And it goes to show that I've, someone is always watching, that your work is always being monitored. People are definitely talking about you in a positive light. So I always uh, gravitated towards helping people visit, build their business. And now that digital marketing is a big platform, um, there's tension to me loving to do web development. I said, um, Pharrell Williams, the artist, once said that we're always a, we're always a student. We're always learning. So Amen. Um, being that we're that I'm doing web development and I love what I'm doing. I said, turn that hobby into business and that's exactly what I'm doing now. And um, people are loving, loving what I do. I love the response that people are getting. So it's just an ongoing cycle that, I, that I'm currently in, but I love it, so. That's great. So yeah. how do you stay on top of everything in terms of technology is changing so yes. much, every, so rapidly, every day, every every day week, yeah, right? For sure, so for how sure. do you keep up with it all? Um, I'm on my MacBook all the time. I'm always on my computer answering emails, uh, building websites and but when it comes to staying up to date I'm on Twitter a lot and I like to follow brands and businesses that are gravitated towards what what I like to focus on so I you know do some follow some of my friends but I follow brands like Forbes um, Ad Age I follow TechCrunch people that are in the tech community and they're always on top of it when it comes to um, staying on top of recent topics and another thing is I have a notes I have a notes section in my MacBook called articles to read. Mm -hmm. So I'm making a mission to read one article a day okay. that's gravitated towards what I like, what my field is. Welcome back to the conversation. We are talking about women in, in technology and my guest is Ariana Davis, a yes. student at FSU. Yes. yes. So before the break, you were telling me that there weren't many women involved yeah. in technology mm -hmm. back when you were in school. Correct. What about in college? Are there? In college mm -hmm. is definitely, uh, I would say, a growth in women in, in tech, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it just ties back into seeing how digital marketing has grown. And it, it's, we use our cell phones every day. Mm -hmm. Cell phones, laptops, whatever. 
um, since we're using it on a constant constant basis that people are gravitating towards, okay, how is this working? How are people being able to make apps? How are people able to make websites? How are they able to make their own emoji? Mm -hmm. And that all ties into technology. So right. um, seeing that that's a growing platform, a lot more people are wanting to get involved. And that's also pushing the barriers for women to get involved in tech. So coming to college, um, I definitely saw a lot more females mm -hmm. in um, my classes and being able to connect with them and, and even get ideas from them. So that was definitely an awesome um, thing to see over time. So where do you see the future of technology? Mm, that's a really good question. Being that technology is, is, is growing, as you said, rapidly, even when it comes to like theme parks, my, one of my favorite features that Disney does is the Magic Band, where mm -hmm. now everything's connected on your on your bracelet. You don't have to swipe your card. You don't have to take out your debit card to swipe. It's all connected on your band or your phone. Mm -hmm. So I would say since um, technology and like financial stability mm -hmm. is two huge factors in them coming together, I would say the direction when it comes to currency and technology is definitely going to shift. The way people are able to make investments, the way people are able to um, communicate with others. Mm -hmm. People use um, WhatsApp, it's called okay. WhatsApp. They're able to communicate with people who, are over, who live are. overseas. They are, I have that So one. <laughs> um, being able to, instead of making a call or a text to people overseas, and sometimes our, our cellular provider like we'll charge it for that. We can just use an app and communicate to them mm -hmm. every day as if they're like right, you know, right down the street yes. from us. So, the way that um, the economy is growing and also with technology, I would say that's a big thing because people are constantly making investments. Um, Snapchat, as an example, mm -hmm. just entered the stock market earlier this year and that expanded their business by the millions. Wow. So digital marketing and, and, and also ec like the economic standard is like a big thing that's going to be, it's going to shift the way how people are receiving and, and also investing their money, I would say. So. Okay. So in closing, what advice would you give a woman that would be interested in getting in, involved in technology? Awesome. Uh, one advice I would say is definitely get involved with your community. There's a great website called Meetup, meetup.com, where you're able to look up based on topic, your location, how, how far out you're, you're able to travel, mm -hmm. and uh, you're able to reach out to different communities that are in your area. So for example, I live in Orlando, so when I'm in Orlando during the summer break or winter break, mm -hmm. I go on meetup.com, see what other activities are occurring, and there's different ones where this intro to programming, how to uh, build a, a WordPress site, mm -hmm. um, tips for people who do freelancing. Wow. So, and it's really broad. There's even one called Code and Coffee, which is my favorite. And we go to a coffee shop and we code for about two, three hours that day. Oh my god! And you're gosh. able to, to talk to other developers and, and designers too. So I would say definitely get involved in your community because there's, there's someone just like you who's looking to get started and doesn't know where to start. So if you're able to com Exactly. So mm -hmm. if you're able to communicate with people like that and um, just use each other as a um, support mm -hmm. and uh, just go from there and, and practice every day, you'll be able to get your foot in the door and just grow from there. So. I love it, great Thank advice. You. Thanks. Well, it looks like our food is here. Uh, what did you get, Ariana? I got the skinny Italian for sure. Okay. With the eggplant, eggplant fries, fries. nice. That looks wow, amazing. that does look great. And I got the New York salad pie, wow. which is their cheese pizza with the New York salad. And this looks delicious. So that is all the conversations we have time for today. We'll see you next time on Conversations with Nicole. Okay, wow. That's great. Yes, it looks good. Mm -hmm. Now through August 9th, mention your sauce and trolley on Conversations with Nicole and receive one free order of risotto balls or buy one, get one free pizza, equal or lesser value. Centrale Italian Parlor, located at 815 West Madison Street. We'd like to thank our guest, FSU instructor Christy Chapman and FSU student Ariana Davis for their insights on women in technology. Join us next week at Early's Kitchen, where we'll be talking about the support of small business with guests Antonia Smith and Terrence L. Barber. I am Nicole Everett. This is Conversations with Nicole, where we are connecting the community through conversations. We'll see you next time. All right, Nicole. And three, two. Greetings. Today's topic is, no, I don't want to do that. Hold on. What are we doing? What are we doing? Welcome. Welcome.
welcome. Right. Are we, wait a minute. Can we just come here for a minute? Conversations.